I'm really excited because I think you guys are going to love today's slider workout. As you probably gathered by the name, you're going to need a set of sliders. So I'll link to the ones that I have below, but actually these are getting really old and they don't slide that well. So today I'm actually just going to use a set of two dish towels. Dish towels work perfect if you're working out on a hardwood floor. Um, also just working out in one socked foot would work too. And if you have carpet, you could do overturned Frisbees, magazine covers, um, DVDs, get creative. In addition to your sliders, we are going to need some weights. Uh, we're going to need a set of light weights. I'm using two pound weights. You could go higher or lower. Um, and these are optional, okay? So when we get to the sections where I'm using light weights, if you wanna do just body weight, totally fine. What is not optional though, is I want you to have a single heavier weight. So I'm gonna use a 20 pound kettlebell. You could absolutely just use a dumbbell. And as always, go up or down, whatever heavy means to you. The structure of this workout is one you guys seem to really like a couple months ago when I did it with a body weight workout. We're gonna build a combo over two minute blocks. So the first 20 seconds of the two minute block, you'll just be doing a singular movement. So let's say a lunge. The next 40 seconds of that block, we're gonna add on to it. So it'll be that lunge plus a carriage pull. You do that combo for 40 seconds. For the last 60 seconds, we're gonna add on a third movement. So it'll be a compound movement, the lunge, the carriage pull, the dive, and you do that. So in total, two minutes of work, we'll rest for 30 seconds, and then we'll build our next combo. In total, you are going to build five combos. Two of them focus on the left side lower body, one of them focuses on core and upper body, and the other will focus on lower body right side. We're gonna go through those five combos twice. So in total, this is a 25 minute workout. That being said, if you're short on time or you're a beginner, maybe you just go through it once, that would give you about a 12 minute workout. Slider exercises are great because they're low impact. So there's not all that jumping around that can often irritate knees if you have joint problems. That being said, don't confuse low impact for low intensity. This workout is tough, it is going to burn. As with all workouts, make sure you're properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body, modifying or stopping as needed throughout the workout. If you're new to my channel, know that I don't play music in the background because I want you to be able to listen to whatever songs you like. So if you don't have a playlist queued up, you might want to get that going. Now I'm going to give you a preview of all the combos we'll build before we get to the workout. So you're going to have an idea of what to expect. After that preview, we'll get right to it. going with that first combo in which we will isolate one leg. I'm going to start on my right leg and so that the cues are consistent, I want you to start on your right leg too. So you're going to have your left foot on the slider, right foot is going to be on the floor, and at the beeps we'll start with a back lunge reaching the arms overhead. So hips are sliding down and back, that front right knee is staying stacked over the heel and with your torso you're hinging forward. So notice, where are my shoulders? They're right over the knee, they're not over my hips. That lean forward is gonna help you keep the work in the front target leg. At the beeps, we're gonna add in a slide through the back leg every time we're in our lowest lunge. Beep. 
Now, when we're in our lowest lunge, we want to make sure we're not just sinking into our hip flexibility. So you want to stay active through the glutes and you want to keep your hips square. So most likely you're going to need to slide your back left hip forward a smidge and your right hip back a smidge to square them off because we tend to want to roll open towards that back leg. Once you have the hips square, you're going to squeeze through the glutes. Engaging your bum is going to help lock into position. You want to stay really light through your back foot as well. So notice my back heel is lifted really high. You're light through that foot. You're keeping the weight in the front heel. At the beeps, we're going to add in a bow. So after you do that slide through the back leg, you're going to stay low. You're going to hinge your torso forward so that your torso is basically parallel to the floor, sweeping the arms back behind you. And then you sweep the arms forward and with control come up to the top. That part's very important. You're going to notice that once you swing the arms back behind you, it's going to be tempting to just bring everything up all at once. I want you to first bring the arms up overhead, pause, and then with control rise up out of that lunge. You have 30 seconds to go here in this first combo. Keep it going. Checking on that front leg. Again, knee is stacked over the heel and the weight is in our heel. So you should be able to wiggle your front right toes if you had to. Last few seconds. Okay, you get 30 seconds to rest. We're gonna go on to combo two. Combo two is still targeting the right side of our lower body, okay? So same deal, I want your right foot on the floor and the left foot is once again gonna go on that slider. We're gonna switch to using our heavy weight and you're gonna hold the heavy weight in the opposite hand, so in the left hand. The first exercise or the first movement of the combo, we're actually not even really using the slider, but you're gonna have that left foot staggered about six inches to a foot behind the right foot, and we're gonna go into a deadlift. So notice a deadlift is not a squat, it is a hinge, okay? So the first part of this movement is I want you to think of sliding your hips back. It's like someone's pulling you by the back of the pants, okay? So yes, my knee is bending here, um, but it's hinge, not squat. Our torso is staying long, our chest is staying open. Now we're gonna add in a sliding back lunge. So it's one sliding back lunge, and then one of those single leg deadlifts. You're here for 40 seconds. So that sliding back lunge, same movement we were doing in the previous combo, but it's a whole different ball game now that we have that heavy weight. Same form cues apply though. I want you to keep that front right knee stacked over the heel. And when you slide into that back lunge, I wanna see a hinge forward with your torso. So again, shoulders are aligned over the front knee. They're not over your hips. At the beeps, we're gonna add in a row at the bottom of our lunge with that left arm. So when you're in that low back lunge, one row, and then rise up. When you're doing the single leg deadlift, try to keep light through the back foot. So your left foot is helping with balance, but you shouldn't have a ton of weight in it. Now, if that row is a little too heavy, when you're at the bottom, you can take your right hand and put it on your right thigh for support and do the row there. Make sure that your core is really active here when you go into that row, so picture you're knitting your ribs together. We're long through the spine, chest is staying open. So notice, I'm not hunching, I'm not rounding through my shoulders. Long spine, open chest. You have 10 seconds to go here. And rest. Okay, so right side of our lower body is done. Now we're going to do those same two combos, but on the left side. So grab your lighter weights and your pro by now. It's going to be the exact same things. Let's get into position. Left foot is on the floor and the ball of your right foot is on the slider. That right heel is jacked up high. We're going to stay light through that back leg. We have that sliding back lunge with that overhead raise at the beeps. Let's go. So when you're in your lowest lunge, I want you to picture that back right leg is making a diagonal line with your torso. So from the top of your head to that back right heel, one straight diagonal line. So to achieve that, you have to lean forward. I know I'm a broken record, but it's very important. 
lean forward with the torso. That's gonna help you stay out of the back hip flexor. Okay, we're adding in that slide next time you're at the bottom. We're keeping the arms active here. Yes, the weights are light. It's not a huge burn for the arms, but just adding in the movement with the arms is going to fire up your core and require you to work a little harder to stabilize. Throughout this movement, I want you to think there is no transferring of weight into your back right foot. All the weight stays in that front left heel. At the beeps, you know what we're doing. We're going to add in that bow. So after the next slide through that back knee, hold the low lunge, hinge your torso forward, really exaggerate it. Your torso is basically just hovering over that front thigh. Arms sweep behind you. They sweep overhead, and then you rise up out of the lunge. Doing a little check-in with your torso. Make sure that you are not hunching your shoulders forward, okay? We're not rounding through that upper back. Roll your shoulder blades down. Chest is open. Knit your ribs together. Grow long through the spine. Okay, so we have about 20 seconds to go here. That leg is probably starting to really feel it. I want you to stay in it. I want you to try to avoid the urge to pause at the top. So when you stand up, don't lock out your left knee all the way, okay? Keep a soft little bend to it, and then you're right back down in your next rep. Last few seconds here. Stay with it. You're so close to that 30-second break. Okay, shake it out. So we are gonna ditch the light weights and we are gonna find that heavy weight. I'm using a kettlebell. If you're using a dumbbell, grab that. So we're still on the left leg. So left foot's gonna be on the floor, right foot is going to be on the slider and you're gonna hold the weight in your opposite hand. So in this case, the right hand. We're gonna start with that deadlift. So the setup is you have that right foot planted about six inches to a foot behind the front left heel and you have the heel lifted high. So all the weight is in that front left heel. And then we hinge, the hips are sliding back, the torso hinges forward. We're not hunching though. So if you had a mirror in front of you, you would still be able to see what was ever written on your shirt on your chest. That didn't make sense. But if you were wearing a shirt with something written on the chest, you would be able to read it. Okay, let's add in that back lunge slide now. So it's one single leg deadlift, one back lunge. Lots of hinging going on. So this leg series, um, it's really going to hit hamstrings and glutes. You should be feeling it all throughout the back of your legs here and your bum. When you hear those beeps, we are gonna add on the third and final piece of the combo. It is gonna be that single arm row when we're in our low lunge. So you're gonna slide back, row that arm up, elbow to the ceiling, and then come up. If these are not challenging you, then you are not using a heavy enough weight. I don't know about you guys, but I am feeling it through the back of that left leg here, especially rising up out of the lunge. That's the hardest part for me. You have 30 seconds to go. Keep it up. You got this. Single leg deadlift, back lunge row. So I don't, I care more about quality than quantity. So you don't have to rush through these. You know, you'll notice that I have kind of an even tempo here throughout it. Uh, I don't want you to add in pauses though. So I want you to try to stay active the whole time. It's fine if you're going a little slower, but I want to see continuous. Final few seconds here, right till the end. and shake it out. Okay, so legs are gonna get a breather. We're gonna go into our final combo that we're building, and it's gonna focus on core and upper body, specifically triceps, as far as upper body goes. So we're gonna be in a plank position, and you're gonna need your both feet on sliders here. The first move is going to be a cobra. So you kind of start in a high plank, and then you bend your elbows with control, lowering to a forearm plank. So let's make our way to that high plank. Quads are active, glutes are active. 
From here, you're going to bend those elbows, lowering down with control, and then march up one arm at a time. And if you're using a mat, you're going to have to walk forward just so that those elbows are constantly hitting it. So you notice I march up, and then I just walk forward so that I always have mat under my elbows when I'm lowering. At the beeps, we are going to add in a knee crunch when we're in that forearm plank. So you lower down to that forearm plank. Now bend the knees towards the elbows, straighten them back out, march up, start from the top. Now with that march, I want you to make sure that you're alternating which arm you lead with every time. Okay, so don't always press up the same side every time. When you're doing that knee slide in towards your elbows, I want the knees to come out wide. So really like to the elbows or to the outside of the elbows. That way you're kind of engaging through the obliques as well. We have one more piece to add on. It's when it's going to be a low squat. So we slide down to our forearms. From that forearm plank, you do one knee tuck in and out. You're going to march up to your straight arms and then slide the feet in, release the hands. You're in a low squat for a second and make your way back to the plank. So that low squat, it's to give you a little breather from the plank stuff because I know two minutes is a long time, especially for the shoulders, to be in plank work. So you're welcome. <laughs> Now, that being said, don't spend a lot of time in that low squat. Your feet slide up. You bring your hands up. You pause for a second. They're coming right back down. Get into your plank. 20 seconds to go. You got this. Almost there. Right through to the end. Woo, and rest. Okay, so you're officially at the halfway point. We're going to do that entire thing one more time. If you're a beginner or you're just short on time, you could end the workout here. Otherwise, let's make our way back to standing, find those light weights. You guys know the drill. We're going to go back to our right leg, and we will start with that back lunge with the overhead raise. So your right foot is going to be on the floor and the left foot is going to be on a slider. You have those lightweight in hand. We're going to start with that back lunge. 20 seconds here. So I know I'm a broken record, but form is important. So let's just go down that little checklist. Right knee over right heel. The knee isn't jutting out forward. Instead, the hips are sliding back. Hips are square forward. You're squeezing through the seat. At the beeps, we're going to add in that slide at the bottom. Knee draws in. No transferring of weight into that left foot though, okay? So when you do the slide, I want all the weight in your front right heel still. Speaking of keeping the weight in that front leg, one of the ways we do that is to lean forward with the torso. So even when you rise up out of this, I want you to think of keeping a slight pitch forward. Shoulders are always over that front knee. It's as if you're kind of peering over the ledge of a cliff, okay? And our spine is long here, neck is long. When those weights reach up overhead, we're not scrunching the shoulders up towards our ears. We're trying to relax through the neck. At the beeps, we're going to add in our third and final piece of the puzzle. It is going to be that bowing motion. So you slide down, low lunge. Pull the knee in, send it wide. Hinge the torso forward. You're bringing it parallel to the floor, so your chest should just be hovering over that front knee. The weights swing behind you. You swing them up overhead, and then you slowly rise up out of the lunge. I don't want you to rush up out of this, okay? So really break it into its parts. Arms come forward, pause and then rise up out of the lunge. You have about 30 seconds to go. Final 10 seconds here. Get through the combo once, maybe once and a half. And you have 30 seconds to rest here. So we have one more combo focusing on this right leg. Ditch the light weights. We're going to switch over to our heavy weight. We're going to do that deadlift to back lunge to row combo.
So right foot's still on the floor, left foot is still on the slider, left hand has the heavy weight. We'll start with that deadlift. So your non-working side, that left foot is staggered six inches to a foot behind the front foot. You're hinging the hips back, torso hinges forward, but you keep that chest open nice and broad. Core is active here, so I want you to knit the ribs together. Picture you're buttoning your bottom two ribs in. And we're going to add in that sliding lunge. So one single leg deadlift, one sliding back lunge. And just one note on form. So I want you to stay active through the core, and I just gave you that cue. Picture you're buttoning your bottom two ribs together. Sometimes what happens, though, when we do that is then it causes us to tuck our tailbone. You're not tucking through the tailbone. Instead, think of reaching the tailbone long. I, no, I don't want you to arch into the low back either, but I want you to maintain neutral spine. We have one more piece to add on. At the beeps, you're going to add in that single arm row when you're in your low lunge. So when you're in that low lunge, I know we've talked about this, and watch me though. I'm tilting my torso forward in it. Shoulders are over the front knee, and I'm keeping my back leg pretty straight. So I don't want you to stay perfectly upright with the torso. Your shoulders are not stacked over your hips in that lowest lunge. They are stacked over the front knee. Core is active. When we row, we're driving the elbow up to the ceiling as if we were bringing our shoulder blade in towards the spine. You have just about 20 seconds to go. I want you to stay continuous throughout this. If it's getting to be too much, you can always slow it down a little bit, but we don't want to stop, okay? The goal of this workout, two minutes of continuous work. 10 seconds to go. Stay with it. You got this. Shake it out. Your right leg is officially done. So we're going to do those same two combos on the left leg. You know the drill. We find our light weights. So for setup, left foot on the floor, ball of the right foot on that slider. We'll start with the back lunge with that overhead raise. If you have tight shoulders and lifting your arms overhead like this is a lot, maybe you just reach them out in front of you, okay? That's always an option. It's okay if you're not getting the biceps all the way up by the ears. Okay, now we add in that knee slide at the bottom. It's very tempting as you draw that back right knee in to shift weight into the right foot. I really want you to focus on keeping all your weight forward in that left heel. So really light through that right foot as it slides in and out. Don't transfer any weight into it. We've got one more movement to add on. At the beeps, it is going to be that bow. Low lunge. One pull through the back knee. Arms overhead. Dive forward with the torso. Sweep the arms behind you. Sweep them up overhead. Then rise out of that lunge. So when you come to the top of this lunge, like I was mentioning in our first set, don't lock the knee out all the way, okay? I want to soft bend in that front right or front left knee even when you're at the top. That's going to keep the muscles active. So and an, a good way to think about it is when you're standing with locked knees, you know someone can come up behind you and um, hit the back of your knee and you'll fall over a dead leg. The reason is because your muscles aren't active, okay? You're just kind of stacking the joints and standing there. If your muscles were active and that knee wasn't locked out, you wouldn't fall down when someone hit you there. So it was a very long analogy, a long way to say that I want the muscles to stay active throughout the two minutes. So no locked knees. Final few seconds here. You got it. We're almost done with this combo. Shake it out. You have 30 seconds to rest. Put those light weights away. We are done with them for good. We're going to find our heavy weight one final time. So this is your last two-minute push for the lower body. 
Hopefully your hamstrings and glutes are feeling it by now. I know mine are. So let's get set up. Left foot on the floor, ball of the right foot on that slider. We'll start with the single leg deadlift. Weight is in your opposite hand. So the left hand. Sorry, the right hand. <laughs> I'm confused. Don't listen to me. So yes, knees are bending in this, um, but the movement starts with your hips. So your butt is sliding back and then your butt is sliding forward as you stand. So think forward and backwards more so than down and up. All right, let's add in that back lunge slide. I'm gonna feel a lot different than when we do it with light weights. It's gonna be a little harder to get to the top. So notice in both the deadlift and the back lunge, we have that hinging action going, all right? So shoulders forward over the front knee and back up. Shoulders hinge forward over that front knee and back up. Okay, last piece of the puzzle, add in that single arm row when you're in your low lunge. If you need more support for that, then your non-working arm, okay? That left arm can come onto the left thigh for support when you row the right elbow up to the ceiling and down. Make sure that your core is really active when you do the row so that you don't collapse into your back. So knit the ribs together, but grow long through the spine and reach your tailbone back. I don't want to tuck tailbone. You are 30 seconds away from being done with lower body, okay? Stay with it. Ten seconds, guys. We got this. Right to the end. Do not stop. You're too close to the end to quit now. Woo. Okay. Legs are done. Ditch that heavy weight. We just have one more two-minute push to go. Okay. You got this. It is going to be that core upper body combo, that cobra with the knee crunch, and then into the low squat. The low squat is really just me being nice and realizing that it is a lot of time to be on your shoulders like that. So you'll get a little breather. Try to make it through the first minute though, staying in this solid plank. From your high plank position, let's go into that cobra. So you're sliding backwards as you bend the elbows. Try not to thud down, okay? It's slow and controlled. Elbows land softly. And then march back up to your high plank. And you're alternating which hand you lead with when you do that march. At the beeps, we're going to add in that knee crunch at the bottom. So we lower down to our forearm plank, slide the knees in, slide them back to the plank, and march up. And again, once I march up, I'm walking forward um, because I don't have much mat under me and I want it to stay under my elbows. So I would recommend doing the same. If you are have a longer mat and it's okay with you moving backwards, you don't need to walk forward. You can just march up and then go right into your next cobra. We got our final piece of the combo coming up. At the beeps, we add in that slide to low squat. All right, let's do the whole thing. So from our high plank, we slide down to our forearms. The knees crunch in wide, engaging through the obliques. They're back. We march up to a high plank, slide the feet out wide, shift into a low squat, bring your hands off the ground. Don't hang out in that low squat very long, okay? So it's, in many cases, a necessary break for the shoulders, um, but it shouldn't feel like a rest, You have 30 seconds to go in this entire workout. You got this. You've made it this far. What's 30 more seconds, okay? Hang tough. Let's get through this. You're going to move consistently throughout these last few seconds. We're nearing that final countdown. We are in single digits here, okay? It's under 10 seconds. Stay with it. And you did it. Awesome job. 
Hope you enjoyed that workout. If you did, you guys know the drill. I'm a broken record at this point. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will see you here next week.